Hi guys, welcome to another how-to video. My name is Dave Davis, CTO at DVS. So today we're going to look at the virtual host function for the K and I series recorders. Now the function of virtual host is to allow you to access the cameras that are on the PoE port externally. So say if you're remotely off-site and you enable the virtual host function, you're then able to gain access to each of the IP cameras connected to the internal PoE switch of the NVR to then make any alterations or adjustments that you need to directly on that camera because there are some settings that have to be done directly on the camera. It does also work on non-PoE uh, port cameras. You can use it on cameras connected to the LAN port, although it doesn't always work depending on the internal network design of that network. But for today's purposes, we'll show you for the cameras connected to the PoE port. So as you'll see, we've web browsed into my K-series recorder. So I've got two cameras there. So if I press play on there, just to show you, there are two cameras connected. Wait for the K-series to catch up. And we'll just stop that. So if I go to configuration, this is the 77K series. So under system, it's the NIK4. Uh, we're on the latest firmware currently for this unit, but it was available for the last uh, a lot of firmware on this. So to turn this on, you go to network, advanced settings, and then un un under other, you'll see enable virtual host. Now I've already ticked it, so I'll take it, just leave it ticked and click save. Now, if I go to system and camera management, it creates a hyperlink for all of the cameras that are connected. So if I click on one that's online, and click on that, it'll open that web interface directly so then I can access that camera that's directly connected on the internal uh, PoE switch. Now that's handy regardless because my computer is talking to the NVR, I'm not in that IP range or connected to the PoE switch that's built into the NVR, so even if I'm internal to the network and need to access the camera, that's a really handy function. So I'll just do that. So all we need to do to get this to work is under port forwarding. So I've already um, port forwarded my standard ports. And for test purposes, I'm using 88,554. These would normally be changed to whatever you like, but I'm just going to leave them as default for now. So what I'll do is I've already, if I go to manage games and applications, you'll see under the height vision rule there, I've already port forwarded 88,554. I'm also going to port forward 65001. 65016 so 65001 to 65016 are the 16 individual poe ports that are built into the back of the nvr we'll click add and we'll click apply so now those virtual ports there enable me now to talk to my internal poe externally so all we need to do now is open up a web page now, if I go to Google, this is what I like to do, many out there, but if I go to Ping EU, now we're connected to the BT router via the Wi-Fi as well. You'll see at the bottom right-hand corner, it's the same. I've connected to the router via Wi-Fi and the NVR is hardwired into that. So if I go to Ping EU, that's the IP address, the external IP address that we're actually looking to talk across now. This is a dynamic BT one, not a static. It's one of our secondary backup lines. We don't pay for the static address. If that was static, I'd be able to use that every single... I know I would know what that is and just use that every single time. So if I now open up a new web page and just simply web browse to that IP address and click enter, it'll take me to the login page of the NVR because it's port 80. So if I log in, admin, I'm not going to tell you my password, but it should be that. So we're logged in directly to the NVR. That's brilliant. Using the external IP address, we're now logged into the NVR. Now, if we take that one step further and open up another web page. Now, if I want to talk to port 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever, I use the external IP address, semicolon, and then 65001 is camera 1, 65002 is camera 2, 65003 is camera 3, and so on and so forth. Now, if I just do that and hit enter, I don't think there's a camera connected to that one. There's only a couple of cameras. It might be actually four. HTTP. Sometimes you have to type this in. 65004. There we go. 
if you ever get that, always type the HTTP first and don't allow the uh, Google to try and translate you. For some reason, it doesn't like you through Internet Explorer. So we'll just wait for that to load now. It will be probably a little bit slow. It's not the fastest. It is a backup line. The fan on my PC is running extremely hard, if you can tell. So it should be three and four, both three and four. But it's loaded, but Google doesn't like it. Let's try three. Seems like an age when you're just waiting, doesn't it? There we go. So this is the actual web page. The internet is slow through this router, so accessing it through the laptop, through that router, and then through the PoE port does make it slightly slower than normal. So if I just log into the camera, as if I was logging in locally, that will log me in directly into the camera. Okay, as you can see there now, after a bit of time, my uh, laptop's trying to do antiviral scans and CC cleaner as well as record the screen capture and Windows updates so it is a little bit slow but we got there in the end so using the external IP address on the 65004 this is camera 4 so we actually gained access directly to the camera so using like the configuration or any of the functions we'd be able to directly alter any of the settings within the camera itself remotely really really handy function uh, just gonna stop that so that's record and that's the camera. So we've got both through the external IP address. Now that's great if you know what the external IP address is, if it's fixed, or if you're using uh, like a third party system like DIN DNS, you can still use the same. So it'd be the address plus semicolon 65001, 65002, whatever, that's fine. You can also do it through Hide Connect. So if you go to configuration on the recorder, takes a little bit more so if you just go to height connect make sure that's enabled so we have enabled it verification code is there so if I log into my height connect account so I can go to I need to change let me just log into this you have to do it through the name name Okay, okay. So if we see the, this unit here, this is the unit. So if I edit this, uh, we change the device, the name, name to DVS uh, KNVR. So that's the device, the name, it's like DDNS, it's got to be unique. And if we put it to manual port forwarding, server port is 8,000. It could be 8,001, whatever you set it as, and HTTP happens to be 80 in this case. Click OK. Uh, so we'll put it DVS KNVR. Okay, DVS KNVR. Click on that, modified. So that's now the, the name of that one. So now if I type in www.hike-connect.com forward slash DVS KNVR. See there? So we've taken this. I now know by using the name name function, it's actually reverted to the IP address. So instantly from there, even if it's not a static IP address, I now know what this IP address is externally for now, and I can use exactly the same functionality. So you even using Hike Connect, you can still use this function. It just takes another couple of steps additionally to get that information. Hopefully you found that very, very helpful. I know I use it a lot to support our customers remotely, especially when we're setting up more critical things like AMPR, smart tracking, the analytics, etc. It really does come in handy to have that level of re remote support externally. Watch next week for the next video. Uh, keep subscribing, keep sharing. 
Uh, thanks all for your support. We'll see you soon. Cheers, guys.